Hello, my name is Mark. My name is Mark. And we are students of Ghana Christian International High School. And we urge you all to subscribe to His Girl TV. Link in bio. Hello there, you're welcome to His Golf TV. Um, I will, before we begin with our discussion for today, I would like to remind you to subscribe to our channel if you have not done so. Uh, and if you have subscribed, we thank you very much for your support. Um, in our previous discussions, we looked at some of the sources used in the reconstruction of African history. And we said that there were two main sources, the uh, documentary source and the non-documentary sources. And we have already done some of the documentary source where we came across uh, autobiography, uh, minutes of meetings and others. Um, we also said that ethnography uh, was one of the non-documentary sources used in the reconstruction of African history. And so today we are going to go into details and look at some of the advantages and the disadvantages in using um, ethnography uh, as a source in the reconstruction of African history. And then we will also look at the um, definition of ethnography. Uh, and then uh, that is, is basically going to be our lessons for today. We look at the definition of ethnography and how it can help us to uh, study or get information for the reconstruction of African history. And also look at the advantages and the disadvantages in using ethnography as a source for reconstruction of African history. So let's um, quickly go in there and look at our lesson, I mean, our lesson objectives. So our lesson objectives for today, the first one will be that by the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain ethnography as a source for the reconstruction of African history. All right, uh, yes. And then in our next one, we should be able to discuss the advantages, okay, all the merits of using ethnography as a source for African history. Okay, and then also we should be able to discuss the disadvantages or the merits of ethnography as a source of African history. What are the disadvantages in using ethnography um, to reconstruct African history? And so these three objectives should guide us in our discussion um, today. So let's begin with um, Let's begin with um, what is ethnography. Of course, you have seen wild pictures over here. Good. So, what is an? I mean, what is ethnography? Uh, ethnography is the study of uh, present-day social institutions, as well as craft and artistic skills of what people. So, ethnography, uh, or in ethnography, we study present-day social institutions. So, what are some of the present-day social institutions among the African people. Some of them we have festivals. We can talk of marriage. We can talk of uh, um, the, I mean, the naming ceremonies, the puberty rights, um, and, 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 and many other social institutions of the African people. Then we also study the craft and the artistic skills or work of these people. Okay, And that is what basically ethnography is about. So when you want to use ethnography to study African history, it means that you are going to go into details to find out what they do on their funeral rites, what they do, they perform, I mean the rituals they perform, their festivals, uh, you know, their marriage ceremonies, and, and, and those social institutions among the African people. Those are the things that you are going to study. And uh, those things or those social institutions are going to give you some sort of information, some sort of um, idea about the people. Okay. Now, ethnography can also be defined as the scientific descriptions of peoples, peoples and cultures with their customs, habits, and mutual differences. So, you know, these social institutions make up the 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 culture. Um, aspect of the people, all right? And so scientifically, which means that you go to the people, you interact with them, and learn about their culture um, together with their customs um, and, and their habits, you know, and, their, and, and then the mutual differences in some of these things. So basically, when you are studying the present-day social institution, 
and craft and artistic skills of a group of people, you are basically also studying the, 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 the culture of the people. Okay, so you studying the customs of all these people would help you to understand the people that you are dealing with and where they are coming from. And that is what ethnography seeks to do or seeks to achieve. Okay, now examples of some of these um, uh, social institutions, we can talk of festival, we can talk of the process of making uh, poetry, we can talk of beads making, we can talk of weaving, and we can also talk of construction. And so when you look on my, on my right hand side, we have some pictures, beautiful pictures, showing um, the cultural life of the people. Some of these pictures were taken either through a funeral rite. So this picture, for instance, here was taken uh, during a funeral rite all right, of the African people, which is a social institution. This over here is the king of the Asante Empire. Um, and this was taken probably during a festival. This is a festival among the Homo, uh, the people in Ga, uh, of course, in Greater Accra. This is the Hobotocho festival uh, among the, 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 um, um, the airways, all right? And then we have the puberty rites over here. Now, all these things you see here are reenactment of history. The things you see here are embodiment of information, um, uh, detailing about the, the past of the people. For instance, when you visit the Homo War Festival, uh, um, um, sorry, let's even take the, the Homo Chocho Festival, you know. The festivals are, 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 I mean, are celebrated in order to reenact the history of the people, and we would talk about them uh, individually in the course of our, our discussion. But bear in mind at this stage that ethnographers or ethnography deals with studying present-day social institutions craft and artistic skills of the people scientifically, which then means that you are supposed to go to the people and study them, be part of them, and study their customs and habits and all of that. And those things are going to give you very, very good information and um, historical information about the people. Good. So let's look at the advantages when you use ethnography to study African history. What are some of the advantages that you stand to get? Now, ethnography help us to understand present day technology, present day technology among the people. So a technology that the people are using today, when you are able to trace the, the history behind that technology, when you study that technology today, and you are able to trace, to know the genesis, the history behind that technology, it will help you to understand the things that the people are doing today. Okay, so the conclusions drawn from the study and examination of these institutions and artifacts in their present form help towards understanding and explaining the past influence on the formation of present skills and techniques. There are some things which they are doing today or which are being done today, which were informed by what happened you know, uh, um, in those days. So you can understand a lot of things being done today especially uh, among the social institutions of some of these people, you can understand them by tracing their past. When you don't trace their past, sometimes you'll be too, you, you can be too quick to judge them, okay? So let's look at the next one. It also helps us to understand the past. So studying the, the social institutions today is going to enable you to understand the past what really happened in the past. And that will even give you, uh, you know, you, you, you even come to understand the, the, even the present even more. So the conclusions drawn from the study and examination of these institutions, artifacts, and examinations of these institutions and artifacts in their present form help to fully understand and explain what the past. When you don't understand uh, the past, how can you understand the future? And so when you want to study about something, go back listen to the migration story of, of that group of people and you will realize that you know you understand why they do the things that they do okay and that is one advantage of um, ethnography let's look at more ethnography also help us to understand and study festivals yes, so we can be able to understand because festivals form part of the social institutions that ethnographers are interested in studying. So um, ethnography provides a useful opportunity um, to study African rituals, 
and festivals, which are mainly a reenactment of historical events. Among the events, uh, for instance, the Hobochocho Festival is celebrated annually, annually to um, commemorate their exodus and liberation from the tyrannical rule Togbe Agokole of, of Noche. So, studying these um, um, social institutions, we are saying, would enable you to understand the meanings of festivals. African festivals are not celebrated, uh, to excuse me, to say, to, 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 to praise some devil or some, some god somewhere, you understand? Some of these festivals are, are celebrated mainly to, uh, to remember their past, to, 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 you know, to remember their past. It's the same as, as Christians who celebrate um, Christmas, to remember the death of Jesus Christ on the cross for them. That's the same way some of these African festivals are, are, I mean, are celebrated to remember the history of the people, what they have been through. And for instance, the Hobochocho, for instance, as we have talked about here, uh, it reminded the Everest of how uh, they were able to um, run away from that wicked king uh, called um, Togwe Awokoli. Of no change, and it is it is just as that. There is nothing to that. Okay, so all the things, all the rituals that are being performed um, during that festival, the Hobo Chocho, is just to remember, reenact um, the history of the people. Again, it also helps Africans uh, in tracing their ancestry. Uh, when you use ethnography to study or as a source for the reconstruction of African history, it helps the Africans to trace their ancestry. Africans are able to. Uh, able to ethnography to trace their ancestries and record some important events like the Homo War, the Bochocho, and then the Inkegan, of course, festival, Ingangan festival, right? So when, when you use ethnography, when you study the present social institutions of, of, of a group of people, you are able to trace the ancestry of the people. That is, you are able to trace where the people come from, okay, or, or where the people came from, or migrated from. And that is what we mean by um, that um, using ethnography helps to trace the ancestry of the people. So let's take a look at the, 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 the demerits or the, or the disadvantages of using ethnography um, to reconstruct African history. Now, one of the um, biggest problems in, in, in using ethnography to reconstruct African history is the fact that it is not easy to get meanings from studying present-day institutions. Uh, yes, uh, yes, it is not easy sometimes to get meanings to, uh, to studying the present-day institution. Now, why is it not easy? Um, uh, this is because of fast modernization and westernization of our traditional values. And so may have swept away some important aspect of our cultural heritage. You know, but, but the, 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 so the issue here is that you won't get the, the, the social institution, let's take for example festival, that you, are, you want to study and know into the past. You realize that a lot of things have changed about the festival because of westernization and also uh, modernization. A good example was that of the a depot rites, which is being performed by the people of Krobo in modern day um, Ghana. I happened to watch uh, a video of, of, of their um, right, and the, 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 the one talking was saying that a lot of things have changed because of uh, the perceptions that people had about the depot, and so they had to you know, make certain changes to the rites that are being performed for the young girls. And in doing so, you alterate the whole, uh, the whole process. So as time passed, you realize that the, 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 the whole ritual, the whole ceremony is not um, authentic as um, it was in the beginning. You understand? You realize that you know, and so many ideas have been introduced, which originally were not in there. And these ideas are introduced so as to conform to the new ideas and the, and the criticisms that are coming um, towards the whole um, you know, institution. And so that is how that whole thing is. And for instance, even our marriage right, for example, as Africans, because of westernization and modernization, there are so many things that you would do in addition to 
what our forefathers were doing. There are some things that our forefathers were doing that has been taken away from that. And then because of Christianity and Islamization, we have inculcated a lot of things in there. And so it's very, very difficult to understand the past because what you are learning uh, presently is not in its raw state. I hope you understand what I'm saying. It's not in its raw state. And so it becomes very difficult to even try and get you know, meanings to it and, 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 and all of that. The next one is that the influence of religions has been a problem to the studying of some of these social institutions. Yes, so um, some of these uh, missionaries who came uh, to propagate the gospel to the African people, you know, branded some of the African uh, religious cultural aspect uh, as being uh, barbaric, um, as being satanic, you know, uh, as being primitive. Uh, some even branded it as paganism. And so uh, as time, you know, goes by, you realize that a lot of the African people have moved away from their traditional beliefs and traditional culture. Uh, and so it, it's making it very difficult uh, to study some of these social institutions. Because some of these social institutions are actually even, they are dying away or they are fading away uh, because people will choose to um, celebrate or attend or, I mean, celebrate um, Christmas, um, Easter, and Edel Fetal and Edel Ada. Uh, instead of attending a traditional festival. And so it's, it's, it's also becoming a big, big problem um, for um, ethnographers who uh, really wants to um, study some of these um, things. But I think um, um, currently things are, are going on well. I think festivals now, presently, I think are received well um, in Ghana. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I think that is all that we have for you for the um, ethnography and I hope that our class has been short and very educative enough for you. Um, this is a Novdek um, question, of course this is Wasi Novdek question in 2010. Uh, I hope you try your hands on uh, for me. In what two ways has ethnography helped in writing African history? Have a nice day. If you have any question, if you have any topic that you may want us to look at, uh, kindly uh, write it in the comment section and uh, we will be glad to answer you and do what you want us to look at. Have a nice day.